Well, now let's talk a little bit about me. I was uh, born in a seaside town of Scarborough in uh, northern Yorkshire, England. Um, so I always say there was seawater in my veins. Um, it was just after World War II and there was still rationing going on in Britain. Uh, we actually did come over to the New World on a boat. That was in 1952. April in the North Atlantic, <laughs> not so much fun. The Rosa Comb, an old troop ship, didn't have stabilizers, so my mother used to say that I was the only one on the ship that didn't get seasick. I still don't, amazingly. After a snowy train trip from Quebec City, we arrived in Englehart, Ontario, and after a couple of years, headed south on the way back home, as many people in the North had suggested we do when we first arrived. We ended up in Toronto in 1961. Well, Toronto was a lot better than Northern Ontario, and even then there was diversity that I'd never seen before in my life. I actually did feel at home, uh, so maybe those people in Ankleheart were actually telling me to go to Toronto rather than go back to England. My dad got a job with the Department of Veteran Affairs, so we stayed. Um, they said, in the future, we'll all have many professions. I started out as a typographer, a trade uh, that's now disappeared, that hadn't changed much since the 15th century when uh, Gutenberg invented the uh, movable type. In 1970, I saw the first automated typesetting machine, and I left the trade. Later, I realized that it was just the beginning of the de-skilling of our entire society. Next, I worked as a photographer, something I did professionally for 17 years. Now, uh, photography really didn't change much uh, since Henry Fox Talbot invented the negative around 1850s. When I saw the first digital camera, I sold off all my equipment, uh, which soon, of course, would be worthless, and left the business. By the way, if you enjoy my videos, please click on subscribe and hit the ship's bell to be notified each time I post a video. Anyway, after photography, I got into adult education. I love to talk and uh, have some modicum of credibility. Now, according to uh, National Geographic, to whom I sent my DNA sample, my family came from Africa and made their way north. Somewhere in, uh, in what is now Europe, my dad's family hung a right into what's now called Russia before heading to Britain. My mom's side headed straight west to Scandinavia and then to Britain. So I guess you could say that I am really English, but the National Geographic says I could be a Scot or an Irishman too since we all have similar DNA, although I tend to think I'm probably English. A friend to this day, Colin Adams, got me interested in sailing. I jokingly say that uh, he invited me sailing one day. There were fair breezes and uh, the water lapping against the hull. It was uh, so quiet with the winds and the sail. Later we anchored off and Colin made this great gourmet feast in one pan, and I was hooked. The next year we had uh, monsoons for two weeks, but still I had a great time. Uh, we went in partnership with another couple to buy our first boat. It was a Drascom longboat. Yeah, so it was... Uh, 22 feet long gaffer rigged yawl, um, I believe made in uh, the south of, uh, of England, in Devon. Um, that was a fine boat, but uh, like many young couples, we got into the two footitis and after a couple of years moved up to a mustard colored hulled Grampian 26 called Joss. 
Rampion says that it sleeps five. Well, it really sleeps three adults and two children. So it was uh, intimate when we all cruised together. Now, one of the couples got the other type of two-foot-itis and walked out of their relationship. Uh, and her share, share of the boat went to her husband. We ended up selling our share to the single guy and he moved it to Halifax. That's okay because my wife was pregnant and money was tight, so sailing or any other expensive part-time activity or spare time, I guess, activity was kind of out. I started cycling after that and for several years ran a bike tour company and uh, bike camped around Europe. One day, while I was in Germany, I had spent the entire day going up hills on busy roadways when I had an epiphany. I prefer to carry everything on my boat rather than my bike and water doesn't have any hills. Well, it's got waves, but for hills, that's what locks are for. When I came home, I started looking for that perfect boat. I knew what I wanted from uh, everything from a Honda outboard to a self filling jib. Also, it had to be a Grampian 26. I knew the boat and I knew how well built it was and how well it handled, uh, even for beginners like myself. This is Marzipan. People often ask me why, uh, why I call the boat Marzipan. Well, it kind of rolls off the tongue like Kodak. And Marzipan uh, has parts of my wife's and my name's uh, and at the time, all of our son's friend used to call my wife Marzipan from that child's TV program. Although my wife looks nothing like her. Sometime uh, before purchasing Marzipan, I began working for the City of Toronto as a trainer. My specialty was taxi and limousine. Do you know what a female chauffeur is called? Five seconds. A chafus. I learned a lot about personal and accessible transportation uh, and helped newcomers to Canada find their first job. It was quite rewarding and I did that until the city decided that training of vehicles for hired drivers was unimportant and not up to them. I decided to retire but sailing in this part of the world uh, in the winter is not possible. So I began consulting to the taxi and accessible transportation community just to keep busy between October and May. I started making videos about stealth camping on my bike and then taking bikes on planes and then somehow I got uh, into being a trespass freak. So many of my viewers had no idea what trespass is. One day, I got a check for just over $100 from YouTube. What the? Um, I didn't realize I could make money from my, money from my videos. Cool. Once I started Grampy Marine, budget boat cruising, and world's worst maritime disasters, I started getting um, deposits into my bank account every month. As of the shooting, I have over 3 million hits on YouTube. I'm retired now, so uh, YouTube and Patreon help me uh, keep up with expenses of the new technology like 4K. Yes, folks, it's coming. All my videos soon will be shot in 4K. So I'd like to thank you very much for your support on Patreon and for watching the commercials. I'm Alan Stokal, and thank you very much for watching this. Hi everyone, I have an update on the upgrades we've been making thanks to your support either on Patreon or just by watching commercials and supporting the advertiser's product. We now have a new camera set up capable of 4K and a new to us Manfrotto tripod with a great fluid head. We're searching for an editing program that uh, fully supports 4K and still fits within our budget. All this thanks to your continuing support.